Hello, my name is Joel Dunsmore, and today I'm going to present to you modern methods for component measurements using vector network analyzers. So when I talk about modern methods, I'm really talking about modern VNAs, and these are quite different than the VNAs of the past because the hardware configurations are much more sophisticated as well as the software configurations. They're much more like a software-defined instrument than uh, VNAs were in the past. They can do a lot of advanced measurements on things like amplifiers, where they can measure IMD, noise figure, gain compression. They can do pulse measurements. We can do antenna test measurements. We can use them for measuring frequency converters, where the signal at the input and the output are different. And we can use them for nonlinear measurements. And today I'm going to talk about a particular nonlinear measurement, which is characterizing a device using a modulated signal. This is a new area of measurements for VNAs. The, in this newest example, I talk about precise uh, measurements with VNAs. And part of the precision comes from the fact that we can use the vector network analyzer error correction to remove a lot of the amplitude and phase errors of the test instrumentation. So for today's talk, I'm going to start with a basic introduction of modulated signals, how we create them, what they look like. And then we'll give some measurement examples I'll show the examples using demodulation in the time domain and then another kind of uh, characterization for EVM we call spectral correlation. And finally, I'll illustrate how some of the difficulties with uh, demodulation occur when you get to high power. And those difficulties are not the same or don't show up when we do spectral correlation. And then finally, we'll show how this might be extended to some of the 6G frequencies. So let's start with what is a modulated signal start with a digital stream, and that digital stream of ones and zeros, depending on the modulation format, is going to be changed into symbols. So here we have a 16 qualm signal, so each symbol represents a hexadecimal number. Uh, we map those symbols to this uh, I and Q mapping, which is a vertical and a horizontal mapping, and from that we get I and Q waveforms. And the uh, square waves, of course, are no good for transmitting because they would require infinite frequency. So these Signals are always filtered in the I and Q domain before they're sent to the upconverter to be transmitted. When we apply that signal that we've created to an input of an amplifier, if the amplifier is even starting slightly into compression, that uh, nonlinear behavior of the amplifier is going to cause distortion. And that distortion will typically do things like clip the peaks of the signal, and that'll cause adjacent channel power, which is power that spreads into the spectrum on either side of the signal, and we see that in the blue trace. It can also cause the EVM measurement to be quite poor as the signal doesn't reach the right level. And if we look on the right, I have a comparison of the ideal signal and the signal that was coming out of the amplifier, and we see that at different symbol points, that's the time where we expect to measure the symbol, there's an offset in the uh, uh, waveform and that offset we call the delta i or delta q, and those are the vector errors, because the i and q together form a vector, that we sum up to find the EVM. And the sum of those errors, or the sum of the square of those errors, divided by the total power of the signal, is what we define as the EVM. But it turns out under some special conditions, and this is one we often see in our test cases, if we have a repetitive signal, that would be one that was generated in an arbitrary waveform generator, and we can sample the signal in the receiver at exactly an integer number of the waveform periods, we can do an exact representation of the signal in the frequency response as well. And in fact, that representation will be a multi-tone signal. So this is showing you the frequency domain representation of a short waveform, and we can see the discrete frequency combs. If the waveform becomes very long, there's still a number of discrete tones that are just more closely spaced. And from something called Parseval's theorem, and I promise this is the only integral I'll show, we can prove that the error in the time domain signal is identical to the error in the frequency domain signal if we compare the ideal waveform to the uh, waveform at the output of the amplifier in the frequency domain. So let me show you a, a setup example of how we would make this measurement. Here I have an arbitrary waveform generator that I'm sending the signal into the network analyzer. And then 
from that into an amplifier and I'm splitting the signal to go into a traditional spectrum analyzer and a VNA used for making the measurements. So this measurement that we see here is called a constellation diagram and we'd expect tiny little dots for each of the symbols but as we add distortion to the signal those dots spread and move around. That ca that's caused by the AM to PM compression. Here in the middle picture you can see that the compression is causing the outer four corners to push in and finally at high enough compression levels the demodulator can no longer track out the signal. In fact it gets confused about which symbol belongs where and that will limit the maximum EVM that we can measure. When we use a VNA to make the measurement we're doing the characterization in the frequency domain. That's what I show on the left. In the frequency domain we can capture the input and output signals and see the amount of the output signal that's identically correlated with the input signal. The portion that's uncorrelated and in this case it's the purple trace shows the amount of distortion that the amplifier is creating and if we sum up all that distortion we get the number of EVM. We can also see the out of channel distortion is in the blue trace and it lines up very well with the in channel distortion as we might expect. Here I show a comparison of using the spectral correlation method with the traditional EVM demodulation method and for something like a QPSK signal the QPSK has, really, has only four symbols in the four quadrants, so they're very far spaced. So we're going to have a lot of symbol error before we can't demodulate anymore. Whereas the uh, 64 QAM signal passes uh, much more information per symbol, but the symbols are more closely spaced, so it's easier to get an error that puts you to an adjacent symbol. If you're on an adjacent symbol, you won't be able to determine the EVM correctly. And that's why you see uh, something in the blind demodulation where we try to reconstruct the symbols uh, has a limitation as we get to high distortion because that symbol will skip to the next symbol and not be recognized as having a large error. If we use the spectral correlation where we can compare exactly the input and output waveforms in the frequency domain, we don't have such a symbol skipping error. Here's a setup I made for doing an upconversion measurement into the 250 gigahertz band. For this measurement, we're using VNA extenders and an external 3.4 waveguide upconverter. We use an arbitrary waveform generator to generate the 20 gigahertz signal, and it's centered at 250 gigahertz, and we're able to achieve a 0.9% EVM. One of the keys to this is locking the clocks of all the measurement systems. So the local oscillator, the RF input signal, the clock to the DAC, are all locked onto the same common clock and therefore the phase noise of the clock to the first order is coherent across all the measurements and doesn't impinge an error on the measurement. If you were to try to do a similar measurement with this using standalone equipment, the independent phase noise would limit the EVM to something like two or two and a half percent at these frequencies. So in summary, this is not your father's VNA. Modern VNAs are like software-defined instruments where you can reconfigure what they do based on the software you have because the hardware is very flexible and has very high performance. In fact, the raw hardware is as good as standalone instruments. For example, the receiver in a modern VNA might have as low a noise figure as the receiver in a spectrum analyzer. In addition, because we can do precise uh, VNA style vector error correction on power, phase, gain, and return loss, we can remove a lot of systematic errors that standalone instruments have to uh, live with in their measurement floor. And finally, by doing things like combining the sources and receivers into a single application, for example, the SA mode in a VNA, it means we can get better signals than and a more precise measurement than even the best standalone test equipment can do today. This is especially true and especially important when we get into the sub terahertz or 6G space. Thank you very much for watching.